Welcome to the Wellness Business Podcast. Simple strategies to cut through the online noise to fast track the growth of your wellness business with Karen Paddock and Kathleen Legris. Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to another amazing episode of the Wellness Business Podcast. Hey, Kathleen. How's it going? Hey, it's going fantastic. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm all settled back in from podcast movement. Yay. That was so much fun. I know. So much fun. We learned a lot. And you know what? I do want to say this, actually. I know we've covered the topic of email marketing before, but I think that was one of the biggest things we saw for people that were doing well in their business is that they were consistently focused on building their email list. Mm-hmm. So for those of you uh, listening that don't know what we're talking about, Kathleen and I both met up in Anaheim, California, and we went to a conference called Podcast Movement, and it teaches you really how to build your podcast. And uh, when we signed up for this, we hadn't really thought about launching our podcast yet. We thought it was going to be later this fall. But... uh, due to some circumstances and some opportunities that we were given, we decided to launch early and we're so glad we did because all of you have really shown us some major love, right, Kathleen? Absolutely. Yes. I was actually, um, I wanted to give some shout outs today. And so, yeah, thank you so much for those of you that are leaving reviews on iTunes. We do, we read each and every one of them. Uh, So I wanted to give shout outs to... And these are just their, you know, their handles, so we don't know who they really are. Awesome Montana, Lauren R44, and Jenny T2007. So yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to leave us those reviews. Thank you so much. Yes, we do read each and every one, and they mean the world to us. And and honestly, that's not the only place we've gotten reviews uh, about the podcast. But it's been an amazing journey, as we've said many times before. But we just really want you to know how much we value and appreciate each and every one of you. And it really takes a village to get this information out there. And we can tell, uh, we can feel the love from all of you and the support based on the number of downloads and the comments and the feedback. So thank you, thank you, thank you. It means the world to us. Yeah, thank you so much. And and like you said, just you know, hearing the feedback and even getting suggestions on future episodes. So we're going to do an episode in the coming weeks all about Ask Us Anything. So we're really looking forward to answering your specific questions on the podcast. I think that'll be a fun one. Um, but today we're going to talk about 10 hacks to double your productivity and skyrocket your results. And you know, Karen and I know there's a lot to juggle as a health coach whether you're a nutritionist or a fitness professional. And because of that, you feel pulled in you know, a million different directions. It's easy to get distracted. And you feel like you know, at the end of the day, you've been really busy, but you really didn't get anything accomplished. And there was a health coach that posted something in my health coach peer support Facebook group that resonated with so many other coaches. And I wanted to read part of it because maybe you can relate uh, to what she's going through too. And this particular post just brought on a flurry. I think we had over like, you know, 54 comments of people saying that I feel the same exact way. So uh, here's what she wrote. Uh, The problem is I have discovered that that having unrestricted time is an incredibly dangerous thing, and I think I've gotten way too comfortable. As a result, I've become my own worst enemy. I have zero structure in my day, and I don't get anything done. I do little things every day, an Instagram post here, a free consultation call there, but I'm not able to follow the set schedule I have planned for myself and don't work on anything consistently. I truly believe I'm 100% serious about health coaching, yet my actions say otherwise, and I don't know what my problem is. I want to be putting in at least eight hours a day working, but I do not treat my job like a real job. So like I said, there were well over 50 comments with other people saying they feel the exact same way. Like they were saying, oh my gosh, I could have wrote the exact same thing. Um, Other people shared things like, I'm very disorganized, easily distracted, and jump from one thing to another. I'm I'm a hard worker and don't understand why I don't have time uh, to fit everything else like I did when I had a regular job. 
And I have felt this way too. And I think most of us do. Like you're thrown into this realm of, here you go, you're now a business owner. You know, have you ever felt this way, Karen? Yeah, totally. And and honestly, some of the hacks that we're going to talk about today, uh, I'm going to be revealing some of my biggest struggles with my business and and what I'm using at the moment to combat my own bad habits, I guess, is how I could put it best. But I'm definitely going to be very transparent on this call. So hang on with us through all 10 hacks because I'm going to open up about some of the things I've really struggled with to stay productive in my business. And I can certainly relate to her story. And I know that one of the toughest transitions there is, is going from being an employee to a business owner. And just as in this example and so many of the comments that followed, you find yourself asking, what's wrong with me? I really want this, but I can't find my groove or my motivation. And you're constantly questioning if you're cut out for this wellness business ownership role. I'm, you know, you can feel like you're in a productivity rut. So I'm up, I'm in a productivity rut and keep hoping tomorrow will be different. And usually procrastinating or mismanaged time and lack of productivity stems from not having an agenda of what you want to accomplish. So let me kind of set this up for you. When, when you're working a nine to five, you have job duties, you have goals, you have target dates, you have expectations. Your daily task schedule isn't necessarily set by you, Right. It's more often dictated by an office flow or a vibration, the way things move through an office. And every company strives to become a well-oiled machine. And I know that's what you want to strive for in your business as well, but it's often difficult. So when you work for someone else, you are just a kind of a cog in a wheel of that well-oiled machine. And you know your performance will be reflected in your reviews and raises for the future, right? So you want to do good, so you stay on task. But all that changes when you become your own boss. It's up to you to build that well-oiled machine from the ground up. And so just as Kathleen mentioned, you know, the gal that so vulnerably posted and so many of you said, hey, me too, um, can relate, you become your own boss and you suddenly have time to work on your business, but you don't even know what that looks like because you've never set up a business before and it's not your fault. So... There are three reasons in my mind uh, that most business owners start their journey on a very rocky road. Reason number one is they start with this grandiose vision with no action plan. Like, I'm going to have a successful business, but there's no plan to make it happen. They don't set specific goals, so daily tasks are really ambiguous. Like, how many of you have said to yourself, what should I even be working on today. I don't even know what I should be working on, right? And then number three is you need to walk the walk before you can talk the talk. And one book that I want to recommend to each of you is a book by Gary Keller called The One Thing. And this book was very inspirational to me, and I'm going to read you a quick quote from the book. He says, when we know something that needs to be done but isn't currently getting done, we often say, I just need more discipline. And actually, we need the habit of doing it. And we need just enough discipline to build the habit. So again, just quickly, I want to say this isn't your fault. Bus building a business isn't something we are innately born with. We don't have this built into our DNA. It's a matter of creating really good habits. And, and that's why we put together this list of 10 hacks so that you can create really good habits and see this forward momentum in your business. Yeah, and we put together what I th what we think is a really great freebie for this episode that's going to help you with setting your goals and putting the right actions into place. And I have that book too, and I absolutely love it because it really, um, you know, focuses on the idea that 
you need to work on the right actions and build those habits. So the freebie is called the five-step formula for setting and achieving your goals in the next 30 days. So what this is, it's going to walk you through setting those goals. You're going to fill in, it's like a little workbook. You're going to fill in what your goals are for the next 30 days. And I think it's just going to really help give you some direction and some clarity so that you can put a solid action plan into place over the next 30 days. All right. Yeah. Kind of like Karen said, first of all, you want to say, don't be so hard on yourself. You know, everything that, that Karen and I are talking about today, these are areas that we have also struggled with at some point. And we have these 10 helpful hacks. So think about the one that you think will help you the most as you're listening. Like, don't, don't think you're going to go ahead and implement all 10 of these today. Pick one that is like your aha moment, like, oh my gosh, that's what I should be doing. All right. So number one is start with a 30-day plan and break it up into weekly goals. And this is super, super helpful for me. I need to chunk things down or else I can feel easily overwhelmed. And I know when you feel overwhelmed, you don't know what to do first and you feel scattered and unproductive. The important, and I'll actually say, I think the critical thing that helps with this is to write down your plan and your action steps. And then focus on the most important things that will have the biggest impact for your business. So I'm going to give you an example. So say your goal and your plan is to get five new clients and you plan to do that by delivering local workshops. So think about how many workshops do you want to give over the next 30 days? Is it one a week? two a week or maybe something else. You know, you have to do what works for you. So write that down because when you're writing it down, you're kind of making a commitment. So say you've decided it's going to be one workshop a week. Make a list of locations and people you can approach about doing those free workshops. Now you want to map out how you're going to approach them. In person, I think is always best whenever possible. And then make your plan of action. If you want to do four workshops, you're going to want to reach out to at least 10 to 12 locations for starters because not everyone's going to say yes. So when you write it down, you're committing to it to some degree and that's going to help you move forward. If you're getting ready to launch a new program, you know, get out your calendar, map out what you're going to do over the next 30 days to build awareness about your business, grow your email list before you launch. And then, you know, plug in that two to three week launch strategy step by step. And if you're not quite sure what to do to launch a program, listen to episode five, where Lori Kennedy breaks this down beautiful in, uh, beautifully in her three-step formula for a successful launch. Um, that one was amazingly helpful. Um, so I see it, even though we say, you know, look at 30 days, I know for me, it kind of helps to have a big picture for the whole year. So I've got like my giant wet erase board, my little, um, you know, you can fold it up. Um, It's a wet erase board that has all 12 months and I kind of plug in different promotions. But when I'm getting ready to plan out the next 30 days, I need to map that out day by day. And that's where the 30-day plan comes in. And you may be someone, I'm more of a pen to paper kind of person, but a good apps that you can use. Trello is good. Smartsheet is good. I sometimes also use Evernote. What do you like to use, Karen, as far as like mapping out your plan? Yeah, I really, I am kind of a notebook girl, honestly. Mm -hmm. So some of the, like if I have links that I want to save that I can reference uh, while I'm going through whatever I'm, let's say I'm building a new program, then I'll use Evernote for that. But beyond that, yeah, I keep a notebook with me pretty much all the time. Mm-hmm. We're old school. <laughs> yeah, we are old school. For sure. All right. So that was number one. What's number two? Okay. So number two is know the number of hours you plan to work each week and know your boundaries. So this one, <laughs> this one I have to talk to myself about probably each and every one of these that I'll be discussing are kind of my own, uh, I'm my own worst enemy with this, but let me share with you what I've got so far. So setting boundaries and expectations around your unique schedule is the first step to really turning your business around. And when you get crystal clear on how much time you 
can dedicate to your business and which days and hours you'll be focusing on your tasks, you'll feel extremely empowered because you'll know, your family will know, your friends will know, this is when you're working. It's easy to compare how much you get done with others in your industry and feel like you're really missing the mark, right? Or that you're behind the eight ball, so to speak. You may only have 10 hours per week to focus on your business. What you can accomplish will be much different than someone that can dedicate 40 hours a week. And the key to getting as much done as possible is to be realistic and structured and to keep things as simple as possible. So my personal story with this one is most people don't realize that in addition to my business, my coaching business, I also run a business with my husband that we took over from his family in 2001 that takes up a lot of time. It's a construction-related business, so summers are super busy for us. So I tend to kind of get down on myself when I don't get as much done in my business because I'm also taking care of that business. And I have to remind myself, I don't have 40 hours a week to spend on my business. And when I've tried to do that... I've burned myself out. I feel myself getting very negative. And I, thank goodness, have have a strong support system with Kathleen and some of our mastermind members that help me, you know, get my head back on straight. But I have to keep it realistic. So when I start feeling frantic or like, oh my gosh, I'm not keeping up with, you know, my colleague in the same industry, I need to remind myself that yeah, I'm doing two different jobs. My time is split in two different places. So I can only do as much as I can do. But staying clear on my goals and knowing how many hours and what days per week and what hours in each day that I am going to focus on my business has become a huge lifesaver for me physically and mentally and really has helped me accomplish so much more. And I think you're like one of the most productive people I know. Like, honestly, you, <laughs> I think you get a lot done. I think you <laughs> underestimate yourself sometimes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Number three, other people's agenda. Be very aware of this because it can get you sidetracked every single day. And I have to say, this was a big revelation for me because this is one area where I would get sucked into other people's agendas. And once I heard this, it was like a big light bulb moment for me. So I heard this from John Lee Dumas of the Entrepreneur on Fire podcast, and I just loved it because it's so true. Um, It's also a huge reason why people don't accomplish anything at the end of the day. Because when you start your day focusing on things like answering non-urgent or non-high priority emails, you're focusing on other people's agendas. And I know it may sound a bit selfish to some degree, but the reality is as a business owner, you need to focus on your agenda first until you accomplish what you set out to, to finish for that day. And once you're aware of this and remind yourself of this, which I do. I pretty much have to do this on a regular basis to remind myself. You'll notice that you get a lot more done. You're not running around putting out different fires throughout the day. So this is what I'm also going to challenge you to do is turn off your push notifications from social media because this is a huge distraction. So once you eliminate the, you know, those constant notifications on your phone, you're not going to you know, continuously be distracted. You know, I don't know if, if you have the push notifications on or not, but really tur- turn them off. I know a lot of you do. I usually check my Facebook Messenger maybe once or twice a day. So I'm not, you know, constantly getting pulled in and seeing comments on posts and things like that. So I did that about a year ago where I turned those off and it's been probably the best thing for me for keeping my focus during the day. The other thing is, You also need to be okay with saying no to people. When you say yes to the things that aren't really important, you're going to have less time to do the things that are important to you. And I became really good at this when my kids were in elementary school. You know, they want you to volunteer for everything. 
And I was, I was, I was signed up for every dang volunteer task that they asked me. And after a while, I thought, you know, why am I the only one that that's doing this? So I started saying no, but very nicely, um, you know, something like, thanks for asking, let me check and get back to you. And then if they do actually follow up, I'd say, you know, I wish I could help, but unfortunately I won't be able to this time. You can keep it kind of vague. Um, so just really be aware of, what your priorities are, what your agenda is, and if you're getting pulled into other people's agendas too much. And I know this, it becomes easier to stick to once you practice it, but it really is, it's, it's a game changer. So you can focus more on your agenda and your own goals. That's great advice. And the push notifications is huge. I just heard yesterday, as a matter of fact, that the statistic that on average, people check their phones 150 times per day. That is, yeah, I, I can't even wrap my head around that. And I, <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not one of them. I probably am. If I counted, <laughs> I'd probably be one. But wow, that says so much. Yeah, and it's and it's funny too because when Karen and I are together, like I can hear her her little phone go off, and I go, and that's why I, for the most part, I try to keep my smartphone like uh, when people are texting me. Probably ninety percent of the time, I just keep it on vibrate because I know I'm going to be like, who's who's texting me? A lot of times, if I'm not doing like critical thinking, I'll have my phone next to me. But um, that's something to think about too. I know we're, you know, all getting, you know, texted and getting these push notifications. And especially when you're like in that two or three hour time frame where you're really like putting the pedal to the metal and trying to get your work done, just eliminate distractions as much as you can. All right, let's move on to hack number four, which is mini wins scores the touchdown or tiny progress each day, week, and month results in big wins. So here's the craziest part about this hack. Not that long ago, I wouldn't have even believed that this was true. (laughs) So this is the craziest thing. But uh, I had heard this, right? Like tiny little progress, which I'll tell you what that means in just a second. I heard someone talking about this and I thought, you know what, I'm going to test this. So what she said was, you just focus on three tasks each day for 10 minutes per day. So when you're looking at your task list or like Kathleen said, you're breaking everything down. If you just really give it all in, no distractions, pick three tasks and focus on each one of those for 10 minutes, you will get a ton done. So this is the premise of what she was saying. And I thought, okay, 30 minutes, like total, really? And so I decided to test it. And guess what? It really did work. And for those 30 minutes each day, I was answering the emails that needed to be answered. So the emails for the people that I'm working with on the projects that are going to put money in the bank, right? Not just the random emails. I was creating the content that needed to be created, right? I was super focused on those three tasks that I needed to get done to move my business forward. So remaining, again, very clear, setting very specific boundaries and turning off all distractions. And I would set a timer and get busy and I was amazed how much I could get done in 30 short minutes. Now, after I did this test, I will say that I almost proved to myself that I could do this, right? That I, that I could just put on blinders for 30 minutes, which I think before that, the reason I was so hesitant about believing that this is possible is because I thought I couldn't even go 30 minutes without, oh, what if somebody texts me or, oh, what if an email comes in that I need to answer? And so this gave me wings to really fly and expand on those 30 minutes or those 10 minutes for three tasks. And so in some cases, I might actually pick one of those tasks and spend 30 minutes on it instead of 10. But ultimately, 
my allotted number of hours or time that I was dedicating to getting my tasks done really decreased because I got very comfortable in the space of no distractions, that it's okay if someone can't reach me for a couple of hours in a day. And I started getting more done in those couple hours than I could, that I, than I was getting done in an entire day or even sometimes, honestly, even in an entire week. Sad to say, but it's true. Like I said, I'm going to be very transparent here. Um, so start with just those three tasks right? Three critical tasks that need to get done and, and just give each one of those tasks 10 minutes undistracted. Um, and you will be amazed at how much you can actually accomplish. Okay. I have a question for you because I, I have not heard of that yet. So I love that you set a timer because you would have to. Yes. So, so what you were working on was three different things for, for 10 minutes. Did you feel like it was a little difficult to like, Hey, I'm, I'm done with 10 minutes. Now I'm going to switch to this thing. Or was it because you had that timer, you know, okay, it's time to switch to something else. Well, it, it felt at first it did feel like, how can I even get very much done in 10 minutes? But truthfully, there were a lot of tasks that I was procrastinating on Mm -hmm. that really, I didn't even need more than 10 minutes. It just felt like I did. But if I just seriously put my all in focus on this thing, I could answer and answer that critical email that needed to be answered, or I could, you know, quickly whip off this, you know, this email or this content or draft an outline pretty quickly if I would stop with the negative self-talk of, oh my gosh, this is going to take so long, (laughs) and oh my gosh, I don't have time right now, or I should be doing 17 other things, and oh, who just emailed me, and ding, there goes my push notification, right? Yeah. So, um, (laughs) Karen, (laughs) that just cracked me up. (laughs) So, I mean, the truth (laughs) is, when I just gave myself the freedom to commit to that 10 minutes for three tasks, 30 minutes in total... I found uh, some real security in that, that, oh my gosh, if I can do it for 30 minutes, I can do it a little longer and a little longer. And very impressed with the results, I have to say. I love that. I might have to experiment with that one because I think it's uh, part of that, I think, is the procrastination procrastination factor that we all, me included, like you put it off because you've kind of made like this, you know, mountain out of a molehill kind of thing, think, oh my gosh, it's going to take me three hours. But like you said, like, okay, no, it didn't. You could get it done a lot quicker and then check it off your list. Right. All right. That was a good one. Mm -hmm. All All right. right. Number five. Number five is skip the bells and whistles until you have a solid working model. And we see this all the time. It's so easy to get caught up in spending a lot of time and money on putting something together like an online program, a membership site, and you like go all in right from the start. Um, but you really, truly, you don't need anything fancy when you launch for the first time. You know, a great way to think of this is, you know, launch as a beta program with the like bare bones basics. Then once you see that it's working and you decide that you want to go bigger, then if you want to spend more money on a membership platform or something, you can. Um, so for example, you know, you can start very simply with an, you know, with using your email service provider, a Facebook group. And then links to your content, like your videos and things like that within the emails and then post those in the Facebook group. So you want to launch your minimum viable program, test what you have, get feedback and get testimonials for next time too. And, you know, always ask yourself the question, what is the easiest way I can get started with this without the bells and whistles? Because I see this is where people get hung up all the time. You know, um, even coaches that purchase my done for you programs and and they want to maybe run it partly one-on-one, but they also want to take it online and they feel completely overwhelmed and confused because there are, there's so many different options out there. So rather than focusing on all the tech things and kind of going down (laughs) that rabbit hole, just ask yourself, okay, what's the the quickest and simplest way I can get this out into the world? You know, looking at the next 30 to 60 days versus maybe it holding you back three to six months 
you know, waiting till you figure out the latest, greatest platform and how it works and what it doesn't do. So I think is keeping the words simple and basic in mind as you get started will be just a huge time and sanity saver. You know, test it, run it, see how it goes. Then if it's a keeper, then you can decide if you want to find like a platform like Teachable, Thinkific or something like that, but just keep it simple for starters. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Something I try to remind myself of every single day. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but it helps. It yes. is. It, it's, yes. it's, you know, you don't have to do what the gurus are doing or what you see really anybody else doing, you mm-hmm. know, because you don't know how much time it took them to do that. So keep it simple. For sure. All right. Moving on to hack number six. It is get an accountability partner that will hold you accountable. And <laughs> oh my goodness, this is one of my favorite. An accountability partner can be someone that you buddy up with so you, so you can hold each other accountable. It can be a small mastermind group that meets once per week where you share wins and get feedback on your bottlenecks. An accountability partner can also be a paid business coach. So I have coached many clients privately and through my Step Into More Profits program which is designed to help, you know, my clients attract, attract their own clients using Facebook and turn them into, you know, paying customers with email marketing. And with that program, they get access to me through a private Facebook group. So it's an opportunity to get my help and have me hold them accountable for getting things done with in a specific time frame. And as you can tell, an accountability partner comes in many shapes and sizes, sometimes free, sometimes paid. But I just want to say and be clear that before we move on to the next hack, that I do have one more comment that about <laughs> really what an accountability partner is not. So what you don't want to do here, and this is really important, you cannot choose a friend that cares about you and sympathizes with your distractions and your life problems and, you know, the issues that you're dealing with. You have to look for someone that's going to hold you accountable, right? So they will give you push back when you need pushing. Someone that will ask the hard questions and make you Like their job is to make you feel a little uncomfortable at times so that you can grow your business more quickly. Now, of course, you know, I'm sure you've all guessed, Kathleen is certainly one of my accountability partners. And yes, she cares for me, but let me tell you, she can be an accountability partner. (laughs) She will ask the hard questions and she will push, push, push. Um, I know that about her. So I appreciate her honesty, even sometimes when I don't want to hear it, I appreciate it. And and we're both, we've been very open with, we're part of a four-woman mastermind group that meets once per week. Um, that group grew very slowly. We've been together a few years now and started with just two of us and then three and then four. And we're really comfortable with the size of it. And we all bring our own unique um, vibration and education and and background to the group. So it they accountability partners come in all different shapes and sizes. Like I said, the key here is that you want someone that is going to call you out when you need calling out and what you know say to you, hey, why <laughs> like Kathleen just did at podcast moment why do you have your uh, text messages ringing all the time? <laughs> Turn that off. Put it on vibrate. But at Kathleen, I can't hear it if it's vibrating. So, I mean, like she wants me to focus on the content at the, at the conference and stop looking at your phone. So, in fact, yeah, sometimes I don't want to hear what she has to say. But the truth is she <laughs> always moves me forward. She's cracking up. Uh, oh, my gosh. In my business. And I appreciate that so much. And I hope I do the same for you, Kathleen. You absolutely do. It's funny as you're starting to talk about that. I can just hear Karen's words. Karen usually says to me, okay, Kathleen, I'm going to challenge you. And I'm like, oh, here it comes. <laughs> 
So yeah, even though we're like best friends, we also have each other's back and challenge each other when we know, mm-hmm. you know, we maybe be doing something in a different way or maybe even just thinking about things in a different way. Uh, All right, number seven is get away from the house to work in two hour blocks. And this means no distractions. And I'm always amazed at how much more I can get done when I'm away from my house. I think you find this to be true too, Karen, right? No doubt. Absolutely. Yeah. There's just something about being in a different environment to get the creative juices flowing. If I have to do some writing or brainstorming, and it's also great for just putting your nose to the grindstone to get stuff done. You know, you can escape to a coffee shop, a restaurant, a cafe, or wherever you think that you'd like to go to get out of your normal environment. Because when you're at your house, oh my gosh, (laughs) <laughs> like you see the dishes piling up in the sink, you know, you have laundry to put away, you know, toys that need to be picked up. But when you're out of the house, you, you're out of that environment. You don't have those distractions nagging at you. So at least for two to three hours, and it's amazing how much you can get done in that short little bit of time. It's, it's mind boggling, truthfully. Uh, I definitely use that one a couple times a week. I have to just get out of here. Truthfully, the biggest distraction I have are my two cats. Like they are a huge distraction because they want my attention. And no matter what your attention getting thing is, pets, chores, children, husbands, wives, whatever, um, yeah, getting out of the house and kind of doing your own thing and being in that other environment really changes your whole vibration, everything that your brain is focused on. And you just know that it's just your thing. You're doing your thing and you don't need to worry about anybody else that's around you at that moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love it too. Super cool. All right. Number eight, we are almost through these guys. I hope you're enjoying them. So number eight is don't do anything else until you complete the one big thing each day to move your business forward. So again, I I hope you're not getting bored with my stories, but this is one of the things that I struggle with the most. I keep saying that. Apparently I'm struggling with a lot of things, right? When it comes (laughs) to time management, but here's the thing. I love checklists. And the only thing that I love more than checklists is actually checking things off my checklist. So my biggest struggle is... I like checking off the the little things first, like Kathleen has mentioned, you know, checking your email or, you know, um, pulling things off my calendar, things that are not really moving my business forward, but yes, they need to get done. And it's this whole thing of, okay, I'm just going to do these few quick things. They've undermined me time and time again. And I've really been experimenting, like I said, with this concept over the last five or six months. And I've realized that when I start with those small little tasks, because they're just going to be a minute, they're just going to be so quick that I never, ever, ever get to the big thing that is actually the thing that I need to get done to move my business forward. I get all those little things done, but there's no time ever left. So If I flip the switch on that, if I turn the tables on my checklist and I work on my big task first, I inevitably always end up getting the big task and the little task done each day. So (laughs) I have to ask myself, why is it so easy for me to revert back to my unproductive habit? I've tested it, I've tried it, and maybe you can relate to this, but I think it's just because it's in my DNA to want to just check things off that list so I can see, oh my gosh, well, I've got seven of the 10 done. That should make me feel good. When in fact, the seven really didn't do anything. I saved all the hard things for last. And I want to tell you a quick story, and maybe you've heard this story before, but it's just as simple as putting uh, rocks in a glass jar, right? If you start with... Um, If you have sand and you have small rocks and you have big rocks 
and you start by putting the sand, which are just your tiny little tasks, in the glass jar. And then you put the small rocks in, which are your medium tasks, and you save the big rocks to last, there won't be enough room in the jar for the big rocks. But if you reverse that model and you start with putting the big rocks in, meaning you get your big tasks done first, and then you put your small rocks in, which are your medium tasks, right? And then you you kind of cap it off with the sand that kind of flows through and fills in the gaps, you can fit everything into that jar. And I am a proven walking model that that does work and that if I force myself, because it's definitely against my DNA or my inclination, if I force myself to stay strong and build a good habit of working on the big things first, the harder things first, and then adding in the the medium tasks and then finalizing my day with the simple tasks, returning some quick emails and, you know, whatever, making a doctor's appointment, things like that. I always get it all done. But it is definitely, I have to remind myself every day and force myself because I never really am in the mood to start with the big thing first. Um, But when I do, I get more done. So I have to develop that habit. I noticed that too. And that's a really good revelation. It's like the domino effect, right? When you focus on the things that are the most important, those are the things that are going to move your business forward. Mm -hmm. And I noticed for me, when I focus on like the big thing that I need to work on for the day, I usually get it done quicker than I think. And I just feel calmer. I don't feel like I'm running around like crazy, like mm-hmm. answering emails and you know doing Facebook and stuff like that. So I, I do think that's something that I struggle with too, and I've been getting better at. It. Mm-hmm. But you know, I know there's just so much being thrown at all of us at any one given time. Mm-hmm. So I, I think, like we talked about in the beginning, it's just developing these habits, right? Uh, that are going to help. So yeah, thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Um, all right. Number nine. And this is something I used to be incredibly guilty of. So see if, if you are currently or previously guilty of this too. Single focus versus multitasking. Multitasking really actually sabotages productivity. When you multitask, you're staying busy, but you're not being nearly as productive. And you've probably noticed this too. Here's another quote from the book we were talking about, The One Thing. Multitasking is merely the opportunity to screw up more than one thing at a time. (laughs) And I think that's kind of true. Like, think about how you feel when you have to juggle multiple tasks. Maybe you feel stressed, frustrated, maybe even resentful, and we're not at our peak when, when we're feeling that way. You know, you can get a lot more accomplished and feel less stressed when you focus on one task or project at a time. And I know, I don't know when it was, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, multitasking was all the rage, right? You were like so awesome if you were like this major multitasker. Well, I think that's kind of been debunked. Uh, I know I always get more done when I have that single focus for the day. And then every, once I get that done, everything else is gravy. You know, I mm-hmm. feel calmer. I feel, and I'm sure a lot of you listening feel like you've been busy, busy, busy all day or all week, but okay, did I really get that one thing done? Mm-hmm. You know, so that, that's something that, that I'm, I think I'm, I'm working on all these things too. Yeah, yeah me too. You know? And we just have to find what, what works for us, what fits into our life and our goals. For sure. For sure. Just to add a little more of that one, um, you know, Todd Herman, he talks about that because he Mm -hmm. calls it contact switching. Mm -hmm. And you're right. I mean, back when I was in my 20s and early 30s and I had a resume, uh, multitasking was at the top of it. Mm -hmm. And any of you that are in my age bracket, I'll bet you multitasking was on your resume too, because it was something you wore as a badge of honor. We had no idea that multitasking is just physically impossible. We think we're doing it, but we're not doing it successfully. So super great point. Stick to one thing at a time. Yeah, because apparently we're screwing up more than one thing at a time. (laughs) For sure. For sure. Okay, guys, we made it to number 10. And the last one is set expectations that are attainable 
rather than focusing on the big end goal. And this is really um, a nice wrap up to everything we've talked about. So many of my clients, many of the clients that I've coached have actually hired me because they have this big goal that they want to accomplish. But as hard as they've tried to do it on their own, they just can't seem to bring it to fruition, right? And that's because they're only focusing on that end goal rather than the baby steps to cross the finish line. So as an example, I've helped many of my clients create and deliver webinars, right? Or launch new products or grow their email lists. Even in some cases, completely overhaul their business model. You know, we just talked with Angie Jones, who was one of my clients. And, you know, three quarters of the way through our coaching together, we completely revamped her entire business model. She wasn't digging it the way it was. And so I asked her, I challenged her, right? My favorite word, my challenge. Um, I challenged her with some really strong, tough questions. I became a really good accountability partner and pushed her into some uncomfortable territory. And now she's revamped her whole business and is loving it. So there are two very distinct distinct parts to a goal. The piece that measures if you've accomplished your goal and then the baby steps that it takes to complete that goal. The expectations that you set around any goal have to be carefully balanced with enough momentum to keep you pushing forward, but not so laid back that you never feel any urgency to get things done. Each one of the hacks that Kathleen and I have shared with you today are kind of really this full circle to this last hack, right? So if you know how much time you have to dedicate to your business each week, you skip the bells and whistles, you keep a single focus, you stop multitasking, and you set expectations for many tasks that you'll accomplish each week, I promise that you will start meeting your big goals. And that is really our whole intention for this particular podcast episode. We want you to stop feeling helpless, overwhelmed, procrastination. We want you to start feeling empowered and like you can do this. So hopefully these 10 uh, hacks, the 10 hacks that we've shared with you today really will help you feel that way. Yeah. And I know we covered a lot, (laughs) a lot today. Mm -hmm. And hopefully one or more of these was a major aha moment for you. Um, So I just want to recap because I know we we covered, you know, 10 different things. So number one, start with a 30-day plan and break it down into weekly goals. Two, know the number of hours you plan to work each week and also know your boundaries and, and set those hours. Other people's agenda right? Be aware of other people's agendas and focus on your agenda first. Four, many wins score the touchdown. Tiny progress each day, week and month results in big wins. Number five, skip the bells and whistles until you know you have a solid working model. Number six, find an accountability partner that will hold you accountable. Seven, get away from the house to work in two to three hour time blocks with no distractions. That's the hardest part. (laughs) Number eight, don't do anything else until you complete the one big thing each day to move your business forward. Number nine, single focus instead of multitasking. And 10, set expectations that are attainable rather than focusing on the big goal. All right. So uh, if Sarah's story resonated with you, chances are this probably isn't the right time to invest in a support team or a coach. There's a high probability that you won't get the biggest bang for your buck because you probably aren't ready. Spending money on coaches and accountability is only beneficial if you have a work routine in place already that allows you to accomplish the established goals in a timely manner. Figuring out your workflow while the clock is ticking with a paid coach isn't really the best use of your money. For sure. And for someone that's coached a lot of people, um, I love it when a client comes to me and they've already tried some things and they just really need... uh, you know, me, someone that's been a little further along in their business than they are to 
share with them some tweaks almost, not really create the wheel. So if you're going to hire a coach before you do that, let me just say that kind of having a plan or having some things that you've tried that haven't worked is a better place to start than square square one and you haven't tried anything and you don't know anything and you haven't created anything because you really are spending your money on someone if they're doing their job right. Like it's really not the place you want to start with a paid coach. That's where you can find an accountability partner that's free or join a mastermind for free where you can get support from your peers and then move into a coaching, a paid coaching situation. I completely agree with that 100% because you were my first business coach and I was at the point where I had already implemented some things, some things that were working well, some not so well. And I just needed someone to, you know, A, hold me accountable, but also help me figure out some logistics of what I wanted to do to get to the next level. And you were completely instrumental in that. And uh, that's that's when I came to realize, uh-oh, when Karen says, I'm going to challenge you, <laughs> I'm in for something good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, usually something you don't want to hear. Right? <laughs> so, Everything we've talked about today, we've thrown a lot of um, tools at you, references to programs, uh, book recommendations. All of it can be found in our show notes. You just need to go to www.wbpodcast.com forward slash episode 14. And your action item, you actually have two action items today which is first, definitely download that freebie, which you can find on that show notes page. But then in addition to that, choose just one hack. If nothing else has been come, become clear here today, uh, you should realize that Kathleen and I are definitely still works in progress. We are both uh, simultaneously working on many of these hacks ourselves and trying to master them. Um, listen, we live real lives too with real families and, and things going on as well. So our recommendation is just choose one of the hacks, the one that really stood out to you the most that felt like you felt a shift inside yourself when we talked about it, like, wow, that really makes sense and implement it. Just put it in place and see how it goes. If it doesn't work for you, try a different one. I guarantee there's something on this list that is going to change the flow of your business in a very positive direction. Yeah, I totally agree. And like Karen was saying, only focus on one at a time. That way you can kind of test it and develop that habit. And once you have that habit in place, then move on to the next one. So we're also going to include a list of these hacks in in with the five-step formula for setting and achieving your goals in the next 30 days. So you can have that to refer back to. So maybe that can be your little checklist of you know hacks that you uh, want to test out. Perfect. Well, this has been a jam-packed episode. Thanks for hanging out with us, guys. I, I hope you have an amazing, amazing and productive week. Yeah, and feel free, leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Leave us a, a comment or a question on our Facebook page. You can find us at the Wellness Business Podcast when you just type that into the Facebook search and come say hello, ask a question and say hi. All right, we will see you guys next time. Have a great week. Thank you for listening to the Wellness Business Podcast. For show notes and free resources, visit wbpodcast.com.